The MVP award has existed since 1956, and Bob Pettit was the first player to ever win the award. Since then, it has become the most prestigious individual award in basketball. The award has been given out 67 total times, and we have seen some incredible seasons by some of the greatest players ever. But the question is, which is the greatest of all time? I'll be counting down the top 50 greatest MVP seasons. For my list, I'm considering a variety of factors. For instance, the accolades they achieved, the records they broke, the amount of games they helped their team win, and the numbers they produced. I also want to establish that we're not counting what any of the players did in the playoffs. This is only accounting for their regular season performance. With that out the way, we can now start the countdown. Number 50, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1980. This is the sixth and final MVP award that he won for his career. And there were no signs that this 32-year-old player was falling off as he led the league in various statistical categories. He was first in blocks, win shares, offensive win shares, win shares per 48 minutes, and value over replacement player rating. This is also only the fifth time that a player has averaged over 24 points while shooting over 60% from the field. This is what happens when you give the most dominant big man a point guard like Magic Johnson. Number 49, we have Dirk Nowitzki in 2007. His case for being here is pretty simple. He was the best player for a team that won 67 games. They are one of 13 teams that posted 67 wins. However, the Mavericks are the only team that didn't have at least two Hall of Fame players on the roster. That is pretty impressive. It also helps that he averaged over 50% from the field, 40% from the three, and 90% from the free throw line. He's in the 50-40-90 club that all the great shooters are a part of. And for the icing on the cake, he posted the 39th highest win church per 48 minutes for a single season. Number 48, we have Kobe Bryant in 2008. His numbers went down for the previous two seasons, but he was playing a brand of basketball that pushed the Lakers into being title contenders. The addition of Pau Gasol certainly helped with that, but check out how the Lakers were performing before he arrived. At the halfway point of the season, the Lakers were only two games behind the number one seed in the West. But let's not act like his numbers weren't impressive. He averaged over 28 points, six rebounds, and five assists while being selected to the All-NBA First Team Defense. Number 47, we have Nikola Jokic in 2021. If you're an analytical nerd, then this season should satisfy all your data-driven needs. He finished with the 5th highest box plus minus, the 7th highest offensive box plus minus, and the 12th highest PER for a single season. But it was his efficiency that caught my eye the most. He is only one of 8 players to post a 64 true shooting percentage while averaging over 25 points. That, along with his extraordinary all-around play, pushed the Nuggets to the third best record in the West, even with all the injuries they had. Number 46, we have Will Chamberlain in 1960. He became the first rookie to win the MVP. He was embarrassing the competition in just his first season. He still has the second highest rebounds per game and the fifth highest points per game average ever. He was hitting numbers that people didn't think were humanly possible to reach at a professional level. But Wilt exposed the league. Even against Bill Russell, he scored over 40 points seven times, which included a 53-point performance. If he was putting up numbers like that against him, imagine what he was doing to the rest of the league. Number 45, we have Charles Barkley in 1993. This wasn't his best statistical season, but this is where he proved that he could be the best player on a truly dominant team. He should get credit for fitting in so seamlessly with the identity of this team. He did an exceptional job of getting others involved and knowing when to take over games. In the end, he had one of the greatest all-around seasons by a big man. He is currently only the fifth power forward slash center to average over 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. Will Chamberlain, Kareem, Giannis and Nikola Jokic are the only other big men to accomplish this. Number 44, we have Karl Malone in 1997. By all accounts, this is the year where he impacted the Utah Jazz the most. 
he led his team to a franchise best 64 wins. They also had a margin of victory of 8.79, which is currently the 26th highest for a single season. This was a historically dominant team, thanks to the mailman. And after the All-Star break, the Jazz went 31-4, which included a 15-game winning streak. His consistent play is what tricked the voters into selecting him over Michael Jordan. Number 43, we have Larry Bird in 1984. There was no one that was more versatile during this time. He had the ability to play all five positions at the highest level. He was the best outside shooter. He had the best court vision behind Magic Johnson, and he was rebounding better than 70% of the starting centers. On top of all that, he led the league in defensive win shares. Although he wasn't a great one-on-one -on -one defender, he found different ways to create impact on that end of the floor. Number 42, we have Moses Malone in 1983. Although the Sixers were already a great team without him, he should get all the credit in the world for adapting to his new situation so quickly. He proved that he could make the quick outlet pass that triggered the Sixers running game. He could also get out and run the break himself. He could protect the paint with his underrated shot blocking ability. And of course, he continued dominating the glass by leading the league in rebounds. He was a big reason why the Sixers had one of the best fast break offenses in the NBA. In only his first season, the Sixers went from winning 58 games to 65. Number 41, we have Bill Russell in 1962. He was the best player for a team that won over 60 games for the first time in NBA history. They also had a 9.24 margin of victory which is currently the 18th highest mark ever. Nobody was safe from getting demolished by this all-time great team. Although the Celtics had so much talent, it was Russell's defense that separated them from the rest of the league. For instance, they didn't have a single player that was a top 10 scorer. However, they were the best defensive team. This was all thanks to the ringmaster. In fact, he has the fourth highest defensive win shares of all time. Number 40. We have Moses Malone in 1982. He was as dominant as any big man that you can think of. He is the only player since the NBA slash ABA merger to average over 30 points and 14 rebounds. His dominant play is the only reason why the Houston Rockets were tied for the fourth best record in the West. The ultimate stat that proves how valuable he was to his team came when they traded him away to the Sixers in the offseason. With him gone, they only won 14 games. He deserves so much credit for how he made this team look so competent. Number 39, we have Joel Embiid in 2023. His numbers were simply staggering. He won the scoring title and he posted 13th highest PER for a single season. This is also only the 13th time that players averaged over 33 points and 10 rebounds. He's in the same company as Wilt, Kareem, Elgin Baylor, and Bob McAdoo. Keep in mind that all of those players reached those numbers before the start of the merger. He currently has the highest points per game average by any center in the modern NBA. Number 38, we have Allen Iverson in 2001. What made this season so impressive is he took that Sixers team to the second best record in the league. They improved by seven games and they went from having the fifth lowest offensive rating to the 13th best offensive rating. Although they were a great defensive team, their offense depended solely on the answer. As far as the numbers, he's only the second player to lead the league in points and steals. The other player to accomplish this is Michael Jordan. At six feet and 165 pounds, he became the shortest and lightest player to win the MVP in a league dominated by big men. Number 37, we have Michael Jordan in 1998. More than any other season of his career, he demonstrated that he can carry a team to a dominant year without much talent around him. Without Scottie Pippen playing for the first 35 games, the Bulls went 24-11. and 11. Let's keep in mind that Jordan was the only Bulls player to be selected as an All-Star. So without any All-Star teammates, Chicago was a top 3 team in the league. He was able to accomplish this by doing what he does best, and that's scoring the ball he became the oldest player to ever win the scoring title. Number 36, we have Steph Curry in 2015. His spot here has more to do with his historical accomplishment. He was the leader 
of one of the most dominant teams in NBA history and the creator of the three-point era of the NBA. The Warriors had a margin of victory of 10.1 points, which is the 11th highest mark ever. In other words, it was a normal night when they beat their opponents by double digits. The teams didn't know how to defend the next evolution of the game. Eight years later, and everyone is still trying to emulate this legendary season by Curry. But no one can beat the original. Number 35, we have Tim Duncan in 2003. Although his perky numbers don't exactly pop off the screen, he did lead the Spurs to 60 wins. This was a notable accomplishment considering the type of talent that was on the team. David Robinson was in his final year, Tony Parker was in his second year, and Manu Ginobili was only a rookie. This team's dominance started and ended with the greatness of Duncan. What made him so special wasn't his statistical dominance, but is that he mastered the intangibles of the game that meant the difference between winning and losing. He displayed the perfect balance of making his teammates better and taking over when needed. Number 34, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo in 2019. He was the best player on a historically dominant team and the best defender on the best defense in the NBA. The Milwaukee Bucks wisely changed their offense to spread out the floor more properly and allow Giannis to score super efficiently. His field goal percentage jumped from 52.9 to 57.8. His offensive dominance was reminiscent of some of the best big men the game has ever seen. That's a big reason why this season currently ranks 19th all-time in PER. He also finished second for the Defensive Player of the Year award thanks to his amazing defensive versatility. He was the ultimate two-way player. Number 33, we have Nikola Jokic in 2022. His advanced numbers are amazing. He recorded the highest PER in box plus minus for a single season. He also recorded the 13th highest Valley over replacement player rating. But we don't need the numbers to prove how valuable he was to the Nuggets. They were without two of their best scorers. Jamal Murray missed the entire season and Michael Porter Jr. missed all but nine games. Despite being shorthanded, the Nuggets finished as the sixth seed in the West and they had the sixth best offensive rating. Number 32, we have Hakeem Olajuwon in 1994. His biggest accomplishment is that he is only the third player to win the MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year award in the same season. He was the most dominant scorer in the post and the best defender a team can have. In fact, he still has the 25th highest defensive win shares and the 26th highest blocks per game average. As far as everything he had to do for the Rockets, he led the team in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. He was always an incredible two-way player, but he also became a leader of the highest order. That's what drove Houston to the second best record in the league, despite no one else averaging over 15 points per game. Number 31, we have Bob McAdoo in 1975. Here's what he accomplished. He racked up the eighth most total points, the 15th highest points per game average, and the 32nd highest win shares. He is only one of nine players to average over 34 points per game. He was putting up scoring numbers that the NBA hadn't seen since Wilt and Kareem, except he was scoring most of his shots from the outside. The degree of difficulty simply felt more impressive than what we saw from any other big man during the time. But what's even more impressive is that he outperformed players such as Kareem and Rick Barry who are in their prime. Number 30, we have Tim Duncan in 2002. He has never been described as statistically dominant, but this season is the exception. He is only one of six players to average at least 25 points, 12 rebounds, and two and a half blocks for a season. The other five players were Kareem, Shaq, Hakeem, David Robinson, and Bob McAdoo. He also posted the 35th highest win shares and the 46th highest defensive win shares ever. If that's not impressive enough, he carried the Spurs to the second best record with no one else averaging over 13 points. The Spurs had the same record than a team that had Kobe and Shaq. Number 29, we have Magic Johnson in 1989. His all around excellence is what caught my eye the most. There is no other player that has posted over 20 points 12 assists and 5 rebounds for a season. He also recorded the 9th highest assists per game average. His superb all-around play is nothing new to us, 
but he was able to add a new element to his game. He decided to be an outside shooting threat, so he increased his 3 point percentage from 19.6 to 31.4. His improvement in his shot is reflected in his free throw percentage as he led the league with a 91.1% average. His worth ethic simply doesn't get talked about enough. Number 28, we have David Robinson in 1995. As it was always the case for the Admiral before Tim Duncan showed up, his numbers were staggering. He's an exclusive club of centers that have averaged over 27 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks. Those players include Kareem, Shaq, Hakeem, Patrick Ewing, and Bob McAdoo. Five of those eight seasons ended with the player winning the MVP award. That's not an accident. David Robinson was truly dominant that season. He also recorded the 33rd highest value over replacement player rating and the 37th highest win shares. But the greatest stat that the Spurs won 62 games. That is a testament to the immense value he brought to his team. Number 27, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1977. The Lakers were a one-man show. This was not a talented team whatsoever. In fact, they even missed the playoffs with Kareem playing all 82 games in the prior year. But he found a way to compensate for the team's lack of talent and they increased their win total by 13 games without adding any key pieces. What's even more impressive is that they had the best record in the NBA. The bulk of the credit goes to Kareem. We still haven't seen anyone else average over 26 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 blocks for a season. The way he uplifted that team proves how great of a leader he was without having any all-star teammates. Number 26, we have James Harden in 2018. He was a leader for one of the most dominant teams ever. The Rockets are tied for the 5th most wins, and if it wasn't for all the injuries, they could have had an even more historic season. In Harden's case, he's only the 6th player to average over 30 points and 8 assists. Only Michael Jordan, Oscar Robertson, Damian Lillard, Tiny Archibald, and Luka Doncic have posted those numbers. He's also only one of 14 players to average over 30 points with a 60 true shooting percentage. He was simply the most unstoppable offensive force in basketball. Number 25, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo in 2020. He became the third player to win the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year award in the same season. On top of that, he was the best player of one of the greatest regular season teams that will ever come across. Those are three achievements that very few players could reach in one year. The Bucks were crushing teams by over 10 points per game, which means that Giannis was sitting out many fourth quarters. He only averaged 30.4 minutes per game, yet he nearly became the fourth player to ever average over 30 points on 55% shooting. Imagine what he could have accomplished if he was playing as much as the rest of the stars of the league. Number 24, we have Larry Bird in 1985. This is when Larry Legend decided to be more aggressive on the scoring end, and his game went to another stratosphere. He was scoring more, but he wasn't compromising his efficiency. In fact, his shooting average went up by 3%. This is where he started building the reputation of being the greatest shooter of all time prior to the Steph Curry era. He shot over 52% from the field and 42% from the three. As far as his per game numbers, this is only the fifth time that players average over 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists. Only Oscar Robertson and Russell Westbrook have done the same. Trust me, this season is worth all the hype. Number 23, we have Magic Johnson in 1990. This is his most valuable season. He recorded the highest win shares, offensive win shares, win shares per 48 minutes, value over placement player rating, offensive rating, box plus minus and offensive box plus minus of his career. This shouldn't surprise us because he had to fill a huge void with Kareem no longer playing with the Lakers. Oftentimes, he was asked to play all five positions. That includes the center position. This proves that Magic is anything but one dimensional. He not only led the Lakers to the best record, but their second best record for the Showtime era. As it turns out, they didn't need Kareem to dominate. Number 22, we have Russell Westbrook in 2017. He pulled an Oscar Robertson. He
he became the first and only player to average a triple-double in the modern NBA. If that's not impressive enough, he also led the league in scoring by averaging 31.6 points. And on top of all of that, there are six different statistical categories where he finished in the top five for a single season. That includes offensive box plus minus, box plus minus, total points scored, value over replacement player rating, and PER. But the biggest one is that he had a total of 42 triple doubles, which is the most ever. This guy was a lightning bolt of energy and adrenaline, and he willed his team to the playoffs by sheer force. Number 21, we have Larry Bird in 1986. After he won his third MVP in a row, people were seriously questioning if this was the greatest player of all time. That's the impression that he left. The greatness of this season has a lot more to do than his numbers. It's the way he led the Celtics to a status that only a handful of teams can claim. For many people, the 1986 Boston Celtics are the greatest team to ever be assembled. Although they had a lot of great pieces, his imprint was all over this team. If you were to do your research on what his competitors were saying, there are too many who are calling him the greatest ever. And that has to mean something for his place on this list. Number 20, we have Magic Johnson in 1987. Just like his rival, Magic was also the leader of one of the greatest teams ever. But he gets the edge because of how staggering his numbers are. This is the only time that a player's average over 23 points and 12 assists. When you combine that with his rebound average, you can say that this is one of the most impressive all-around seasons. With Johnson playing at his absolute best, the Lakers reached a level of dominance that we've only seen a handful of times. That includes posing the best offensive rating that stood for 32 years until the 2019 Warriors eventually surpassed them. Number 19, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1974. Look at those numbers and take everything in. What he was doing that season was not normal. Just to be nice, I decided to give everyone a chance by looking up how many players have averaged at least 25 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 blocks in a season. There have only been 2 players. It was Bob McAdoo in 1976 and David Robinson in 1994. That's the list right there. The Milwaukee Bucks had the best record and the second best offensive rating because of his all around greatness. Keep in mind that he was the only all-star player on the team. Number 18, we have LeBron James in 2012. The Miami Heat opted to give LeBron a positionless role and they unleashed a new beast. He was the most dynamic all-around threat that we've ever seen. He played so many different roles throughout the course of the game and he excelled in all of them. That includes on the defensive end. He was one of the rare players that was guarding all five positions. In fact, he finished with the highest defensive box plus minus and defensive win shares in the league. He could have very easily been on the short list of players who won the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year awards in the same year. Number 17, we have Kevin Garnett in 2004. The numbers clearly suggest that this is the greatest season that we've ever seen from a power forward. He posted the highest win shares, value over replacement player rating, and PER for a single season by any player from the power forward position. He's also only one of four players with a value over replacement player rating of 10 or higher. As far as his per game numbers, only Kareem was able to average at least 24 points, 13 rebounds, five assists, and two blocks. And he only did it once. All he needed was a little bit of help, and he soared to a level of play that we've rarely seen since. Number 16. We have Kevin Durant in 2014. Here's how impressive this season was. He was competing with LeBron James, who was at his apex, and he won the MVP award by a landslide. And this had nothing to do with voter fatigue. There was just no statistical case for LeBron. Durant led the league in eight different statistical categories. From a historical standpoint, he has the 10th highest offensive win shares, the 16th highest value over replacement player rating, and the 18th highest win shares for a single season. This is only the sixth time that a player averaged over 32 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists. And on top of that, he had a 63.5 true shooting percentage. This was no controversy. 
Kevin Durant was the real MVP. Number 15, we have Oscar Robertson in 1964. Here's how impressive this season was. He was the only perimeter player to win the MVP in the 60s and 70s. This was an award that was exclusively for centers, but the Big O was the exception. Here's why. The Royals had the most wins by any non-Celtics team up to that point. They led the league in points, field goal percentage, assist, and offensive rating. You can bet that Oscar was the reason for that. In fact, he currently has the 4th highest offensive win shares and the 10th highest win shares ever. He was only 7 rebounds away from averaging another triple-double. This is arguably the most viable season from a point guard in history. Number 14, we have Will Chamberlain in 1968. This was a season where Will decided to prove to the world that he was more than just a scorer. He dished out a total of 702 assists, which is the most by any center ever. It was in fact the most by any player that season. But he could still score big numbers whenever he wanted to. There were two games where he scored over 50 points while shooting north of 80%. This was also the season where he posted over 20 points, 20 rebounds, and 20 assists in a game. Then on the defensive end, he finished with the highest defensive win shares by any player ever Knight named Bill Russell. He certainly proved that he could do much more than score a bunch of points. Number 13, we have LeBron James in 2010. It was the combination of his power, agility, and speed that made him the most gifted athlete ever. But when you mix all of that with his skill set and shot making abilities, he made that Cavaliers team a juggernaut. There is no other way to describe them. In fact, they became the only team since Chicago Bulls in the 90s to post over 60 wins in consecutive seasons. That's what LeBron accomplished with a team full of role players. It's no wonder that he posted the 8th highest value over a place of player rating ever. This also became only the 10th time that a player posted over 29 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds for a season. Number 12, we have Will Chamberlain in 1966. This was the first time that Wilt was a part of a 50-win season, and it was the first time his team finished with the best record in the league. He finally had a team that could contend for a title, and he excelled with so many great pieces around him. He adjusted his game, and he became the most lethal all-around big man that we've ever seen. Imagine seeing a player average over 30 points, 20 rebounds, and 5 assists. That played a big part in the Sixers improving by 15 games from the previous year. Number 11, we have Michael Jordan in 1992. This was a season where Jordan proved that he could be the driving force of a truly dominant team while being a dominant scorer. We've already discussed how rare it is for a team to post over 67 wins, but they are also one of 12 teams to post a margin of victory of over 10 points. Prior to that year, only Kareem was able to lead a team to over 65 wins while averaging over 30 points. But he was more than just a scorer. This is only the fourth time that we've seen a player average over 30 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals. James Harden is the only other player to accomplish this. For many people, this is the greatest version of Michael Jordan. Number 10, we have Shaquille O'Neal in 2000. This might be the most unstoppable basketball force ever. There was absolutely no way to stop this player unless you threw two people at him to send him to the free throw line. If not, he would dunk on your big man even with his arms wrapped around his body. But the biggest improvement in his game was his renewed focus on the defensive end. He finished first in defensive win shares, second in defensive rating, and third in blocks. He was a primary reason why the Lakers finished first in defensive rating in opponent's field goal percentage. He could have easily added Defensive Player of the Year award to his near-unanimous MVP selection. Number 9, we have Will Chamberlain in 1967. From a statistical standpoint, there was nothing left for him to prove. All he needed to prove was that he could lead a team to the title. So he proceeded to lead the Sixers to 68 wins, which was the most by any team during that time. That currently ranks as the fourth most wins in history. That was all thanks to Wilt's dominance. He currently has the highest field goal percentage by any player that has averaged over 20 points. 
his 7.8 assists per game average is the fifth highest mark by any center. He also recorded 22 triple doubles, which is the 10th most ever. For one glorious season, Wilt had as perfect of a season as you can get. Number 8, we have LeBron James in 2009. I believe that no one has ever done a better job at carrying a weak supporting cast in the regular season. They posted 66 wins without any all-star caliber players. The Cavs even went 39-2 on their home floor, which is the best mark ever behind only the 1986 Boston Celtics. They were reaching pantheon level stuff and it's all thanks to LeBron. He's the only player along with Michael Jordan to post a 20 win shares and 11 Valley over replacement player rating. He also led the team in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. On top of that, he was the main reason why the Cavaliers were arguably the best defensive team in the NBA. Number 7 we have Michael Jordan in 1988. He became the first and only player to ever win the MVP, Defensive Player of the Year award and scoring title in one season. And just for good measure, he also led the league in steals. On top of that, he posted the highest badly over replacement player rating in league history and the highest win shares by any player since the merger. Oh wait, I almost forgot. He's also one of four players to post over 200 steals and 100 blocks. And he has the highest field goal percentage by any player who averaged over 35 points. He accomplished this while players such as Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, and Charles Barkley were all in their prime. But Jordan was easily the best player in the world. Number 6, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1971. His biggest accomplishment is that he led the Milwaukee Bucks to the most dominant season in NBA history. They currently have the highest simple rating system and the second highest margin of victory for a single season. A big reason for their success was that Kareem was the anchor of their number one rated defense, that he was the most efficient scorer ever. He recorded the highest field goal percentage by any player who was averaged over 30 points. He demanded a double team every time he touched the ball but he had no problems kicking the ball out to his teammates. He displayed so much maturity for a player who was in his second year. Number 5, we have Steph Curry in 2016. He not only won the scoring title in the MVP, but he was also the best player on the greatest regular season team. On top of that, he had the greatest shooting season in the history of the sport. He made the most three-pointers with 402. What's even more insane, so he shot a career high 45.4%. That's the highest percentage by any player that has attempted at least 7 threes per game. He also has the highest true shooting percentage by any player that has averaged over 30 points. He was a volume 3 point shooter, and yet he still had a 50-40-90 shooting splits. He put up those numbers while making shots like these. What he was doing was insane, and I wouldn't knock anyone for having this number one. Number four, we have Michael Jordan in 1996. Here's the next player who posted dominant numbers while leading his team to over 70 wins. He accomplished this by completely controlling the game with his incredibly high basketball IQ. And that's on both ends of the floor. On offense, he took his time and took advantage of the mismatches he was able to create. In fact, this is the only season from 1994 to 2000 where a player averaged over 30 points. It was not easy to be an efficient volume scorer during this time, but MJ made it work. On the other side of the court, he was the leader of their legendary defensive attack. In fact, he has the seventh highest offensive win shares by any guard since the merger. It is no accident that he led this team to basketball immortality. Number three, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in 1972. This is the season where he posted the highest win shares, offensive win shares, and win shares per 48 minutes for a single season. This is an incredible achievement that proves how unstoppable he was in his prime. His per game numbers are also just as impressive. He's the only player to average over 55% while scoring at least 34 points per game. He was asked to do more with Oscar Robertson missing 18 games, but the Bucks still found a way to win 63 games and post an 11.16 margin of victory. 
That's the fifth highest mark ever. The reason for their dominance was that Kareem had arguably the greatest season by a center. Number two, we have LeBron James in 2013. He was the most lethal weapon a team can hope to have. He was the greatest physical specimen who evolved into the most efficient basketball player. What makes that even more impressive is everything he was asked to do for his team. He ran the team's offense. He shot over 40% from the three. He was their best post-up player. He was unstoppable on the open court, and he defended the other team's best score. It's no wonder that this team ended up winning 27 games straight. From an analytical standpoint, he recorded the 5th highest win charge per 48 minutes, the 10th highest PER, and the 11th highest Valley over replacement player rating. It was as flawless of a season that will ever come across. Number 1. We have Michael Jordan in 1991. The greatest basketball player of all time, in my opinion, was at the peak of his superb athleticism. He was 27 years old, and the things he would do on the court were outstanding. But he was able to mix that incredible talent with his newfound knowledge of how to win games. With no other teammate being selected as an all-star, he led the Bulls to over 60 wins. They also had the best offensive rating, margin of victory, and simple rating system in the league. They are currently in the top 20 all-time for those last two categories. From an individual standpoint, this is only the third time that a player reached a 20-point win shares and a value over a place of player rating of over 10. This is also only the second time that a player averaged over 30 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2.5 and steals. Rick Barry also accomplished this in 1975. This was the start of the greatest run from a modern player slash team, and they would have never gone there if Jordan hadn't given the greatest MVP season ever. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching the entire countdown. Do you agree with this list, or who would you have at the number one spot? I would love to hear everyone's opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching.